Hello everyone. Are you a dentist who often come across a problem where the patient complains of sensitivity after composite restorations, especially after drinking cold water or eating ice cream and so on? Then this video is for you. I am Dr. Benin. I will make videos that will be useful for dentists and dental students. Kindly consider subscribing to my YouTube channel Smart Dentistry. At first, we should understand the reason for sensitivity after a composite restoration. You might be thinking that the etchant that we use is highly acidic and which is responsible for sensitivity after doing a composite restoration. Or you might be thinking that the usage of a old generation bonding agent may be responsible as the manufacturers claim that the recent generations of bonding agents will not remove the smear layer and does not cause sensitivity or as the caries was deep and which might lead to sensitivity or you may be thinking that the sensitivity is because of not applying a pulp protective base as like in case of an amalgam restoration but before going into the detail just look at this you are using the same agent the same bonding agent and the same composite in doing a class 3 or a class 4 restoration in an anterior tooth and the same materials are used for doing a class 1 or class 2 restorations in a molar but the patient has never complained of sensitivity in anterior teeth but always complain of sensitivity in molars especially that too in case of class 1 or class 2 situations so i could say that the none of the reasons which are listed here is the real reason for sensitivity. So what could be the reason? The real reason is the dentist and the technique which is followed while doing the restoration and the, not the materials which are used for doing the restorations. Once a wrong technique or a mistake happens while doing the restorative procedure, a small gap is formed between the composite and the tooth. Through this small gap which is present between the tooth and the restoration, fluid movements can happen. That is, water can go inside and it can move out. This fluid movement in that gap often results in sensitivity. Especially when the patient is taking some cold food items, the composite will shrink more, leading to the gap being more pronounced and it gets widened. So the chances for sensitivity after taking a cold food is much more. And this is often followed by the bacteria which do end up through these micro gaps which are present between the tooth and the restoration, leading to profound sensitivity, secondary caries and the tooth might become non-vital. This gap often leads to sensitivity and the patient returns back to the dental clinic complaining of sensitivity. So being a dentist, how to avoid this? If we could prevent the gap which is formed between the tooth and the restoration, we could prevent the sensitivity. So in this presentation, I have put on different ways where we go wrong and what are the ways that we can prevent the occurrence of sensitivity. The first and the foremost important step which have to be taken into consideration while doing a composite restoration is the flawless isolation. Isolation is very very critical to prevent post-operative sensitivity. How isolation plays an important role? After doing an etching procedure or after application of a bonding agent, if there is contamination by saliva or by blood or by gingival fluids, then the composite which is placed will not bond together with the tooth. Once it is light cured, the composite will get detached from the bonded tooth surface. Why this is happening? Because after placement of the bonding agent, it got contaminated. And on top of that contaminated bonding agent, we are placing the composite and so there will be no bonding which is happening between the bonding agent which is applied on the cavity surface and the composite that we are placing. So once it is light cured, the composite will get detached from the tooth surface leading to the gap formation between the tooth and the restoration. 
it could be avoided by a proper isolation rubber dam is the most indicated technique for isolation as most of the people think that rubber dam isolation is not that difficult we can apply a rubber dam isolating a single posterior tooth in less than 2 minutes i have made a video how to place rubber dam in 2 minutes if you are interested click on the link and just you can watch that video Carton rolls are another technique for isolation for an anterior region are just enough to do and maintain a good field which is free of contamination. The usage of cotton should be preferably avoided because cotton rolls can absorb more amount of the moisture and the saliva compared to that of the cotton. So from now onwards. If a patient is complaining of sensitivity after composite restoration, the first thing that must be coming in your mind is that after application of the bonding agent, that there could have been a contamination by saliva. So there was no proper bonding between the composite and the bonding agent and the composite was detached leading to a gap between the tooth and the restoration and there is fluid movement in that gap leading to sensitivity. The second reason which is another cause of sensitivity after composite is the incomplete etchant removal. If the etchant is incompletely removed while washing with water, this etchant will remain in the tooth surface thus prevent bonding. Let's see a magnified section of a tooth. We can see that the collagen fibers and also the hydroxyapatite crystals. Once we place an etchant, this etchant will penetrate inside the inorganic content of the tooth and it will remove the inorganic content once it is washed away. While washing, it have to be removed completely. That is the etchant have to be removed completely and no traces of etchant should be allowed to remain on the surface. If this is not done, the bonding agent cannot penetrate deep inside the etch surface and there can be an inadequate bonding leading to a sensitivity. So it is essential to wash the etchant completely with excess water or plenty of water from the three-way syringe while doing etchant removal. The third reason for sensitivity after a composite restoration is over drying. Many of the dentists preferably like to completely dry the edge surface with air. Drying the surface of an enamel is not a problem, but complete drying of the surface of a dentin will lead to the collagen fibers getting collapsed. Once there is collapsed collagen fibers, there will be inadequate bonding. The real bonding happens only when the surface is left little moist so that there is little water which is remaining on the surface and the collagen fibers will be standing straight. On that when a bonding agent is applied the water will be replaced by the solvent which will be evaporated and the bonding agent penetrates deep inside the edge surface forming a bonding. If there is over drying, there will be inadequate bonding leading to sensitivity. The fourth and the most important among all the procedures that should be taken into consideration is the incremental composite placement. The placing composite in a single increment to fill the entire cavity, especially in case of a class 1 or a class 2 preparation should be avoided. If you are filling the entire cavity with a single increment of the composite and once it is light cured, the composite shrinks breaking the bond between the tooth and the bonding agent. As we all know that composite is an acrylic based resin material and all resin based materials are all acrylic materials when polymerization will shrink. Composite is no exception. It will also shrink when it is light cured. Once it is light cured and if it is as a single increment, it will break because the polymerization shrinkage force is higher than the bond which is created between the tooth and the bonding agent. 
Thus, the composite restoration will get detached from the tooth surface, leading to the gap formation, leading to sensitivity. So, what are the ways to avoid it? It is so simple and easy. Place the composite as a small increment in one corner of the tooth preparation, light cure it completely, then you have to place another increment and we have to keep on building the entire restoration in small small increments. So the incremental buildup of composite is very very important and if we are adding as a single increment and class 1 tooth preparations will have a high C factor and in that situation there will be more pronounced sensitivity. The reason for no sensitivity in case of an anterior teeth is the C factor in this anterior teeth is very less. If you want to know more about the C factor which is the configuration factor, it a relationship between the composite restoration and the shrinkage and the sensitivity and the longevity of the composite restoration, let me know in the comments. I will make a separate video of C factor. At this point, we should understand that if we are not doing the composite restoration, especially in case of a class 1 or class 2 restoration in increments, the composite will get detached from the tooth surface leading to gap formation leading to postoperative sensitivity. And the next important reason for sensitivity is the usage of high intensity light curing units. Nowadays it is a fashion and it is marketed that light curing units which can cure composites in 1 second, 3 seconds, 5 seconds and so on. But what happens is when a such a high intensity light cure unit is used, the composite will get polymerized within a fraction of a second. So this shrinkage force is too high to detach the composite restoration from the tooth. So in order to avoid that, we should start polymerizing the composite with a lower intensity. Gradually, we can increase to a higher intensity. While doing this, the chances for the bond breakage is very less. It is preferably better to avoid using very high intensity light gear units directly after placing composite. Rather, we can use a soft start polymerization technique or a pulse curing technique. We can start at a low intensity and then you can shift to a high intensity light curing. The last and one of the easiest technique which I do in my clinical practice is usage of the flowable composite. Flowable composite under a regular composite will act as a base material. In case of a deep caries or even in case of a shallow cavity preparations, if you are applying a flowable composite as a layer throughout the walls of the preparation or at least in the base, it often can prevent the gap formation because a flowable composite often shrinks more than the conventional composite or the restorative composites. But the chances for the gap formation with the flowable composite is quite less. It often shrinks to a, from the middle and the bond breakage will not happen. Once the flowable composite is applied, on top of that incrementally, the restorative composite can be built up. In this way, we can protect the pulp and also we can prevent sensitivity. Try this technique in your clinical practice. Inject a little flowable composite inside the tooth preparation. Take the applicator tip, spread all over the prepared tooth surface cure it completely then you start placing the incremental composite buildup you will not get the sensitivity and the composite will be long lasting try some of these techniques in your clinical practice and let me know whether some of these techniques are really working or if you have some techniques which is much better which is better to avoid postoperative sensitivity Share in the comment section. Let all of us learn that also. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.